The advanced filter feature, we use more complex criteria when filtering your records as opposed to the auto filter feature that we learned in the previous training video. So for example, I've got my main database here and I have the labels up at the top. Then you want to have a mini database, which is just a copy of the labels up at the top over to the right hand side with the conditions or criteria you set to filter out for those records that you want to find. Like we've got a bunch of homes and I want to find those that are three bedrooms and two and a half baths. So to get started, go ahead and click anywhere within your database. Come up here, click on the Data tab, go to the Sort and Filter group, and there it is, Advanced. Click on it, opens up the Advanced Filter window, and the default is to copy the filter in place. We'll choose the other option later. Right now, the list range, it has it in Marching Ants. It could automatically detect my database because I built it correctly. Thank you very much. And if it didn't, you can click on the Classable dialog box button, click and drag to select the range for your database, then hit enter to pop it back open. Then it says, okay, where's the criteria? Click on the Classable dialog box button, and then go ahead and click and drag to select your labels for the criteria database, and then the row down below where it actually has the criteria. Now you need the labels so it can compare and contrast between, well, this is for the bedroom, so it comes over here in the bedrooms column looking for the criteria 3, so it comes down here and it finds 3. So after you select your mini database, the labels and then the criteria down below, hit the enter key on the keyboard to pop it back open. And then unique records only means that when you check that, if you're going to have duplicates, it will eliminate the duplicates and just give you one. But since these are homes and each home has a different address, we're not going to have any duplicates. So we'll just go ahead and click Okie Dokie and scroll back over. And hey, isn't that cool? So it found two three bedrooms that have two and a half baths. And then notice over to the far left, you get the blue row headers letting you know that, let's see, between 1 and 15, the records have been hidden. And then 15 and 16 it shows, and then from 16 all the way down to, or after 16, down to 26 or to 25, those records are hidden as well. And then if you want to undo it, let's say you don't have the undo option here because you saved it closed out of the workbook and then you open it back up, then just come back up here on the data tab to the sort and filter group and click on clear. Now let's go ahead and do it again. Come up here, click on the advanced. And then this time, instead of filtering the list in place, let's filter it over to another location. Let's go ahead and copy it over to just below the mini criteria database that we have over here. And I'll explain why I'm going to do that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and copy to another location. The list range is going to be the same database range. The criteria range is going to be the same range here. And it's already selected I1 through O2. So I1 down through O2. And then copy to. Let's go ahead and delete that, and with the cursor flashing in it, let's just go ahead and select that cell right there, meaning that it will dump everything into that cell, but since it has more than one cell, it'll push it over and then down. And let's go ahead and click OK and see what happens. Hey, isn't that fancy? That means that instead of looking over here, I can look just directly down below and go, OK, uh-huh, three bedrooms, that's right, two and a half baths, OK, that's right, great. Now you can do something a bit more complex for to change up your mini criteria database here. Instead of three bedrooms, two and a half baths, let's go ahead and say that we want three bedrooms, but in the listed price area of greater than 200,000, let's say. Then let's go ahead and do it again. Select a cell within the database, come back up here to the data tab, click advanced. We've got the list range, okay. We have the criteria set, okay. We're going to have to select copy to another location again. We'll have to do it every time we want to copy to another location. And then go ahead and click OK. And it updated. Let's see if it checked out. So out of the three bedrooms here, one, two, three, four of them, only three of them returned that had a listed price of greater than 200000 This other one had 153000 Now what if I wanted like double criteria? Like instead of listed price, we wanted either three bedrooms or five bedrooms. So to set this up, let's go back to the database, come up here, click on Advanced. The database is selected, copy to another location. The criteria range only includes the first blank row below the row header or the labels for each column. So what I have to do is I have to go ahead and let's delete this. And then with the cursor flashing in the criteria range, click and drag and then select the second row below the labels. And then copy to is going to be the same location, click Okie Dokie. And let's see, we've got all the three bedrooms and the two five bedrooms that are available. 
Sweet, let's go shopping. Now keep in mind that once you have it set to looking in both rows below the row header or the labels for each column, that if you go back to doing just one row for the criteria, like you eliminate this one right here and it's still looking in both of those rows below the labels, you're going to come up with errors. So if I come back over here, select in the database, so I can come back, click on advanced, so it automatically selects it by default. And then I go to the criteria, and if I don't update that from row three back to row two to include just that row that contains the criteria, and let's go ahead and copy to another location and click okie dokie, it includes everything. And why not? Because down below we've got nothing, so it assumes that could be anything, which could be everything. So we'll have to keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and click and drag and delete this. Come back up here, keep it simple. Let's go back to three bedrooms, two and a half baths, and then scroll back. Now, I can automate this because clicking on the same steps over and over again gets repetitive. How about if I go ahead and record the steps into what's called a macro? Now, we're going to cover that in a later training video, but I feel it's important that we cover it here to make this feature more efficient. So if I can record everything I do here into a single click, then all I have to do is go ahead and change what I want for the criteria, like change it to four, click, then it gives me the results, change it to three baths, just make the changes and do the updates in a single click. Doesn't that sound just delicious? Okay, so bear with me and be sure to watch the training video on macros so you get the basics. And if you make a mistake with the macro, you want to edit it or you want to re-record, I'll cover that all in the macros training video. So to get started, to record the steps, that I'm going to be doing and to put it into a button that I can click on. You can record the steps one of two ways. You can either come up here, click on the View tab, go to the Macros group, click on the Macros drop-down arrow and begin recording, or better yet, come down here on the status bar and it's right there. If you don't see it there, right-click on the status bar and make sure that you have Macro Recording checked. So since it's checked, let's go ahead and click on it to begin our recording. Well, let's go ahead and give it a name. And let's go ahead and delete that and say it's going to be our filter. And then the shortcut key to execute it, if you don't want to assign this macro to a button, you can do it in a single click, but you'd rather use a shortcut key. I'm going to do Control q to execute the macro. And then to store the macro, is it going to be in this workbook, in a personal macro workbook or a new workbook? We'll just do this workbook. And then the description saying, if you want to type in, this will filter the house database here. But I'll go ahead and leave it as is, and then click okie dokie. And then down below on the status bar, you see that square there? That means it's now recording. Now it's not recording time, it's recording actions or steps. So the first step that we want to do is to go ahead and click anywhere within the database. So it recorded that, so no matter where it's at, it wants to go right here to the cell, which is F10. And then we want to come up here and click on the data tab to begin our advanced filter. Click on that, opens it up, and we have to do everything from scratch. We can't just leave it as is and click OK. That is, if you want to make sure that the macro is going to be recording all the steps that we want executed when we go ahead and execute this with the shortcut keys control Q or as a button. So let's go ahead and delete that and say what's the list range. With the cursor flashing in it, we can go ahead and click and drag to select it. Or if it's too huge, you can type in A1 through G25. Type it in. It'll go ahead and pull it here. And then the criteria range, let's go ahead and delete that. And then with the cursor flashing in it, or if this is in the way, just click on the Classable Dialog Box button and then click and drag to select the labels for the mini database and then the row below it, which contains the criteria. Hit the Enter key to pop it back open. And if you want to copy it to another location, then let's go ahead and set that location, delete it, and let's go ahead and select this cell right here, I5. And we'll leave the unique records alone. Click Okie Dokie. It did its thing. We recorded the steps for executing it, so let's go ahead and stop it. Go ahead and click on it, and you can see when I hover over it, a macro is currently recording. Go ahead and click to stop recording. Clicked on it, we're done. So let's go ahead and see if it works. Let's click and drag to delete it. And I'm clicking in any cell that I want because I recorded the steps when it starts to go over here in the database. And the shortcut keys to execute this is Control Q. Ooh, that was fun. Well, is it really going to do that again if I choose something else? Let's get rid of two and a half baths. Control Q. Oh, wait a second. Something's going on with the macros that didn't happen before when I was going through the steps manually. And that is, is that it jams it over here, something to do with the macro that doesn't like it when I try to use the same area that already has something written in it. So if I go ahead and select the range and delete it, and then go ahead and select a single cell and Control Q, then that's okay. 
So it sounds like I need to go ahead and either after I execute the macros, select the range and delete it every time, or better yet, how about this? We go ahead and create a macro that deletes it. Oh, that sounds so fun. Let's go ahead and create one more macro that will go ahead and clear this area or this range. So here we go again. Let's come down here, click on Start Record, and we'll type in the name Clear. And then you can type in a shortcut key, maybe W. And then we'll do it for this workbook. Click Okie Dokie. Now, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and select the range, and not just the range that is currently being displayed, but the potential range that if we included all the records here, how far down would it go that we want to go ahead and clear out that range. So if I made a mistake, that's okay. Let's just go back because I already selected it and it recorded that. But that's okay if I go back and click and drag and go down here. And then go ahead and hit the delete key on the keyboard and then come back up here and select that cell. It does it so fast that when you execute this, that even though you selected the range once and you select it twice, it just runs right through it. So you won't even see it because it's so fast when it executes it. Now that we have it cleared, well, we recorded the steps to clear it. Then let's come down here and click on stop and we're good. So to execute, control Q, to clear, control W. Control Q, control W. Oh, that is fabu. Now, if you don't want to use the shortcut keys, but you want to add buttons, as I was talking about, then you need to bring up the developer tab, which if it's not up there and it isn't by default, right click anywhere on your ribbon and then go down to customize the ribbon and then come down here and check developer, click okie dokie and it's right there, select it. Then go to the controls group, click on the insert drop down arrow and choose that one right there that says button. Button, button, who's got the button? Click on it, I do, and then come down below and you can see the thin black cross that wherever you click and drag to make your button about yay big, let go. Hey, opens up the assign macro box that we can go ahead and select a macro and assign it. So that one's gonna be the filter, click okie dokie and click off of it and that's the filter button. But if you don't like the name of it, which rightfully so, we wanna call it filter, then go ahead and you can right click on it. Then when you right click on it, it has the resizing handles around the button, in which case you can go ahead and left click in it a couple of times until you can actually get the cursor flashing in it and delete, 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 and then call it filter. And then you can do shift home to select everything from the end to the beginning what you learn about that in my word training video. So watch my word training video. Then after you have it selected, you can come up here, click on the home tab, and you can make it bold and beautiful and choose any other options that you want. And you can also hover, like I said, over the resizing handles until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions and then woo, kind of resize it to where you want it to be and then let go, click off, and there you go. Let's go ahead and do one more. Click up here on the developer tab. Go to the controls, click on insert, and we want our clear button, so click on button. And then click and drag one below that. And then select clear, click okie dokie. And then click inside of it and delete it. And we'll call it clear. Click off of it. Oh, we could have put it in bold. In any case, let's do three bedrooms. Anything greater than two baths. Hit enter. Go ahead and click filter. Hey, isn't that cool? And then clear, filter, clear, before, after. Nice. Now, if you're like, I don't want these macros. I want to get rid of them. I want to get rid of the buttons. And we talk about that in the macro training video. But if you're just aching to do it right now, then go ahead and right click on it. And then after you right click on it, click on the border of the uh, button. And then you can go ahead and hit the delete key on the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and undo that and leave it as is. But you can get rid of it that way. And then also for the macros, well, if you got your developer tab up, you can come over here to the code group and click on macros or go to the view tab and then go over to the macros group and click on the drop down arrow and get the macro name, select it, and then you can go ahead and delete it. Click cancel. And that's how you can go ahead and remove the macros. And then one last thing, if you decide to keep the macros, you can't save it in this workbook, the workbook that has the extension XLSX. And if you don't know anything about extensions, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. But in any case, it needs to be saved, a macro, into a macro-enabled workbook. Because if not, after you save it, you're going to get that option. When I come up here and click Save, it says, uh, the following features cannot be saved in macro-free workbooks. And this is a macro-free workbook. Now, why would Microsoft have two different types of workbooks as far as those with macros and those without? Because macros are very dangerous. 
and when somebody sends you a workbook that contains macros, they could screw up your computer and destroy it. And so you want to be able to differentiate between the two and say, okay, this one's a macro-free workbook. That one has a better trust factor than those that contain macros, especially if it comes from somebody you don't even know or trust. So to save this with these features, click No and then choose a macro-enabled file type in the file type list. If you want to continue saving as a macro-free workbook, uh-oh, what's going to happen to the macros if I click Yes? Don't want to chance it, so let me say No. And then it opens up the Save As window. So it allows us to change the type from an Excel workbook. Click on the drop-down arrow, and we want the macro-enabled workbook, the XLSM. M stands for macro. So you can see it's not the X here. That's the default workbook extension, but the one with the M. So go ahead and select it. It's going to be saved to my desktop. Click Save, and there we go. So notice that when I close out of here and go to my desktop, which one of these is not like the other? So can you tell by looking at the icon which is the original workbook and which one's the macro enabled? The macro enabled has a little scroll here that has an exclamation point that says, hey, there's something else going on in this workbook, and it's a macro. So that way, if you don't want to take chances because it's from somebody you don't trust or don't know, then you can just leave it alone and not open it up. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.